Oh, babe, you got yourself a dose of Lake Milton. You know, going back after being gone for so long, it was like seeing it differently. Because I haven't been to Lake Milton, I think, for for 15 years. <clears throat> it's awesome, isn't it? <laughs> I like it. I like actually going back to see where all of this happened. And you're if pointing you're, to me right now. I yeah. am. If you're watching on YouTube, I am pointing to him right now. Lake Milton, Ohio, James Gordon edition. Check the mic and make sure it sound right, boy. Hey, listeners, ever wonder what it would be like to blow up your comfort zone at the tender age of 50? Well, we did just that. When our last kid went off to college, we hit the road in search of a new hometown. Now we bounce from city to city and bring you along for the ride. This is the Skip Town All-Stars podcast. Welcome back, All-Stars. So happy you could join us today. How are you doing, Trixie? I'm doing great. I'm so excited to have you talk about your hometown. My hometown. The Skip Town All-Stars went back to where half of it all began. (laughs) It is true. (laughs) And although I've been to Lake Milton, Ohio, uh, on a couple occasions, I haven't been a lot. And um, this time going back was just different because he was also our Ask a Local. So we have an offshoot on YouTube called Ask a Local. And it's something that we've been doing now for quite a while where when we visit a town, we grab a local and we get to know a little bit about that town. And well, you know Lake Milton very well, so it was just apropos for you to be our Ask a Local. So you're, you're you know, this is a nice two-in-one. It is going to be a nice two-in-one, although I have to admit a couple things out of the gate. Number one, I haven't spent a ton of time there either in the last 25 years. So Ooh. my... Do you think a lot has changed? Strangely enough, when we visited, not a lot had changed. <laughs> okay, then <laughs> so, I think you're fine. <laughs> there are some new fancy houses on the one side of the lake that we'll talk about, but uh, for the most part, it did not explode like I thought it was going to back in the 80s when the place became a state park. You know, I remember what I remember of the place growing up, and so obviously this episode and my Ask a Local is going to be rooted in that. Uh, there will be people from my hometown coming at me, I'm sure, to say, no, it's not like this anymore anymore or no you got this fact wrong or all that other so. stuff i don't think so i hope so I, I hope they do i want to be corrected because you know i want my memory i, I you don't want to just be nostalgic or not nostalgic i know but i don't think a lot has changed so i don't think you're going to make very many mistakes is what i'm saying oh i don't know we'll see all right let's so. get started where did little jimmy's journey begin little jimmy's journey began in beautiful lake milton ohio population at the time 3500 uh, we were invited back for a little birthday party. My little, my little tiny baby niece. She's your great niece. That sounds so weird to say that. You're old as dirt. Oh my god, that's brutal. <laughs> She's my baby niece. That's what I'm gonna call her. I have my niece, and then I have my baby niece. <laughs> <laughs> like the baby couch in Savannah. Exactly. We have a couch and then you have a baby couch. Yeah, so you have a niece and exactly. you have a baby niece. She would fit nicely on the baby couch oh, in Savannah. She, we're taking we're taking Clara Lynn to Savannah so we she could sit take... on that baby couch because Lord knows you couldn't fit. Yeah. I just got to get her to like say hello or hug me first. All so right. she, you know, I don't spend enough time with her. She's not exactly the warm up to people quickly type person <laughs> anyway. Uh, we'll so, get her there. Yeah. You know, we're working. We're taking things slow. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we get to Lake Milton, Ohio for this birthday party, but let's talk a little bit about the landscape of Lake Milton. So if you've never been to Lake Milton, Ohio, what does it look like? Let's just, let's let's paint the picture. Let's paint the picture. Okay, so Lake Milton is about 20, maybe 30 miles outside of Youngstown. See, they're going to correct me on that already. Somebody's going <laughs> to, they're going to say it's 18 miles uh, as the crow flies. Uh, uh, but anyway. Uh, bring it. <laughs> Lake, Lake Milton is about 18 miles outside of Youngstown. Uh, it, it's, Youngstown, that's, Ohio. That's Youngstown, Youngstown, Ohio. It's the nearest, quote, big city. Um but if you wanted to fly into a large airport, you would either fly into Cleveland and drive for about an hour and a half, or like I fly into Pittsburgh and I'm there in less than an hour. So okay, so the closest airport is about an hour, and that's a Pittsburgh airport. If you want, that's to- where I like to fly in. Yeah, okay. 
how many people live in Youngstown since it's the nearest big city? Oh, I don't know. Youngstown's population uh, used to be 100,000. I think it's far less now. Okay. I think it's far less. I think it's an idea. 50 to 70K, maybe. Got it. I'm not sure to tell you the truth, but uh, a fraction of what it used to be. It was a booming industrial steel town back in the 70s. Uh, when people say Black Monday, a lot of them think about the stock market crash. I think it happened around 88. But if you live in the Youngstown area, no, that is a day in September 1977 when something like Forty to 60,000 steel workers showed up and three major steel conglomerates had basically locked them out of their jobs. Those jobs, the steel mills had shut down. Uh, a lot of those jobs were shipped overseas to China to purchase Chinese steel. Uh, and then there were a lot of uh, other, like there was one company that was sort of on the verge of going bankrupt anyway. But what was left is a very depressed area the entire time. So in the 1970s, things got so tough that I don't know if you remember this or how much of this was ever at play in Chicago, but in the in the rust in what is now what we call the rust belt, you would have cheese lines, milk lines, uh, you would have s sort of government handouts uh, for workers who no longer had jobs and couldn't feed their families anymore. And I remember there were, my dad did not work at any of those companies that went under in the 70s, but there were still some really lean times, layoffs, all that other stuff. And I remember, like, you've never seen a man swallow his pride until you've seen a guy stand in line, like a guy who wants a job and wants to work, stand in line to get cheese mm -hmm. for his family. So um, really, really tough times were sort of my first memories in Ohio. I was, you know, so I was only seven years old when all that went down. Uh, by the time I was in high school in, say, 84, uh, the only real industry in that area was General Motors. There was a Lordstown plant in that area, and that actually just shut down five or six years ago, something like that. Um, but to paint the picture, very blue collar, very uh, it was middle class and then became lower class as I continued to age out of Lake Milton, Ohio. So the ripple effect from Youngstown was your town, Lake Milton, plus the town's neighboring Youngstown. So yeah. people that lost their jobs, it wasn't just Youngstown that was hit. It was also the neighboring towns. And those towns never, from what you're saying, never really recovered. And from what I saw, never really recovered. No, there's a lot of, there's a lot of decay in that area for sure. Uh, just like time stood still in so many ways. Yeah, for sure. I mean, there were cities that like Buffalo has made a little bit of a comeback. New York? Um, Buffalo, New York? Buffalo, New York, yeah. Okay. Uh, which is also considered, like, like they've had their tough times as well. Uh, Pittsburgh certainly had their tough times. Cleveland was a cesspool back in the in the 70s and 80s. Like okay. you, you could literally throw a match on Lake Erie and it would light a fire. Like so much wow. pollution, so much, yeah. And Cleveland has totally... You know, people are people. Cleveland's a butt of a lot of jokes, but I've been to Cleveland. It's a great city now. So mm -hmm. uh, Youngstown has not really made that transition. There are signs when we went home recently, like Federal Plaza was beautiful again. Mm -hmm. You can walk it. It looks very different than when it did when I was a kid. But. I mean, Youngstown, the big commerce in Youngstown is Youngstown State University. Youngstown inside, I would say inside Youngstown. Yeah, it's probably Youngstown, Youngstown State University. There's virtually no manufacturing anymore. Any industry in that area now is pretty much just distribution. So um, I grew up in Lake Milton. The neighboring town is North Jackson. It's more farm country. I grew up on a, a lake that would later become a state park. The neighboring town was all farm country. And if you go there now, it's there are huge warehouses of, you know, it's just all trucking. And Got so it. trucks in and out. Uh, there are, you know, companies that have sort of their warehousing there. I don't know if there's an Amazon warehouse there or not. I'm not sure. I can't remember. But Well, let's talk about what Lake Milton looks like today. I mean, we were there. We spent a few days there. Uh, does Lake Milton, like to me, it is still a lot of farmland. I mean, uh, has it changed much, much for you? 
No, not really. I mean, you know, some of the houses have gotten really nice along the, there's a Northeast River Road that used to be sort of really run down cottages and the poorest of the poor used to live up on that side of the lake. You go up there now and there are people who have, who, you know, big wigs from Youngstown or big wigs from Cleveland or surrounding areas that have lake houses there now. And they've put up like, I guess, Troy Palomalu from the Pittsburgh Steelers or something like that had a house there briefly and um, I mean you're looking at houses now that are like two million dollars or something like some of them are two million dollars that's kind of unheard 1. of 5. right in Lake Melton it's 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 like a fish out of water like it's pardon weird pardon. yeah it's yeah. weird because when we were driving and we were seeing um, these beautiful homes on Lake Milton uh, what I couldn't wrap my head around now this is where like the business ideas start start flying all around yeah. there's nothing in that area to support the homes and the visitors that come to stay in those houses so you know where you have million dollar homes you normally would have really fancy restaurants or really cute clothing stores yeah. or a really bougie pizza place they have zero no. like yeah, okay it's all like we need to talk about this like what is going on in Lake Milton where nobody wants to open up a pizza place across from $2 million homes? Can you explain this to me? On that side of the lake? I don't know. I mean, I have no idea if it's a zoning issue or what, but all oh, you would think forever. You would think up on that side of the lake, yeah, there would be more. Like, you have to drive all the way around the lake to get to a place just to get, like, a little cheeseburger or something like that. And we're not talking, like, to your point, you know, you just built a $2 million house. There's nothing that compares to that in terms of cuisine or wine. There are no wine bars. There are no, you know, it's insane. there's nothing. And, and I get that because I know where I came from and I know that the surrounding community is not really going to support a business like that. Okay. Let's talk about that. Why? Well, let me just, let's go back geographically real quick. Um, yeah. so, uh, the one thing I want to say is that I grew up on the lake side of town. Like I said, the other side was all farmers. I went to a school district that combined both of those towns together. So uh, a total maybe at the time I was growing up of maybe nine or 10,000 people. Um, now you're looking at a situation. So when I grew up in Lake Milton, it was 3,500 people. Now there are only 1,500 people, I guess, in the main section. So driving through Lake Milton, it's really prevalent that it's still a farming town in so many ways. So if well, Lake Milton's not. North Jackson next door is. That they're all part of the same. They're. I know it's hard to understand, but it's two different townships. <laughs> that they all look the same. That combine one. So they combine one school district. But if you go into Lake Milton, there's also a subsection called Craig Beach, and that's not farm country. That's like house upon house upon house. Like it's a suburb in the middle of a lake town it is interesting because when you go to lake milton or north jackson or craig beach uh you know you expect to see farms and you do in north jackson you are correct yeah but you don't necessarily see that on lake milton but i have to tell you when you talk about a lake house lake milton doesn't have that traditional lake house that you're thinking like it sort of does but it sort of doesn't it's like you could get a really like there's an average house that's sitting near the lake and then there's like a little tiny cottage and then right down the street is like two to three million dollar home like literally right down the street yeah. so it is such a mishmash like it is it's a very reminiscent of other places we visited and our travels of the south like it is very reminiscent of the south oh it is for but sure. it's far north it's like it's almost like but why does ohio behave like the south it's so interesting because it, it behaves like the South. Sometimes you'll see a Confederate flag in Ohio. True. Everyone knows it's the North. Yeah. But even... Was never part of the Confederacy. No, Ohio was not. Yeah. But the demographics and the geography of it feels very Southern. You have a very Appalachian um, influence in that area. Oh, and you have that a, explains it. And the same immigrants who were Italian and Scottish and Irish and Dutch and all that uh, were also the same people that would move to work the coal mines in West Virginia or uh, down into the South 
to, you know, maybe eventually some of them became land barons or whatever, but, uh, you know, uh, like any sort of blue collar cotton gin type industry, uh, sawmills, steel mills, you name it. All those people were basically immigrants at one point. They were any, anytime you would have, have an influx of immigrants coming into the population, like the industrial revolution changed everything. So now all of a sudden you had all this opportunity for people from all these countries I just mentioned to come in and work a factory job or work a farming job or a Mm -hmm. big agricultural, at that point, big agricultural job and make a living and have a piece of land for their family that an opportunity they never had, you know, back in their, in their current systems in their old countries. So it was a chance for them to make money. But the bottom line is why you see a lot of people in Ohio acting the same way as you see in the South is because they're literally descended from the same people. So that has a lot to do with it. That makes sense. Yeah. You know, driving there, driving through and staying overnight and visiting and all of that and getting a feel for the area, I'm a little surprised at how people are still surviving because there isn't a lot in that area. No. Yeah. I mean, it's... Again, it was very reminiscent of Natchitoches, Louisiana. Yeah, that's a very fair comparison. I mean, you're talking about Natchitoches, Louisiana, where we were, and Lake Milton sort of being stuck in time in a lot of ways. The only difference I would say is that Natchitoches at one time had, you know, sort of this thriving Southern colonial vibe yes. that Lake Milton does, has never, ever possessed. There's so no downtown. Lake Milton has always been vinyl siding, you know, okay. in that area, in, Are, the, in the specific cottages and areas. Like it was either it went from wood siding to vinyl siding. There, there are no very few. There are nice homes there. Don't get me wrong. There are plenty of pockets, especially you know, um, along Point View and some of the other streets there, uh, back where my grandmother lived in in Lake Milton Estates and all down sort of Southeast River Road. Those houses that face the lake are all, like so many of them have been gorgeous forever. Uh, But for the most part, what you're getting are a lot of just, it's for lack of a better word, cottages. You're getting like, like we had three bedrooms and one bath in our old house you saw my old house it's tiny so that like so my experience is more indicative of the vast majority of the people that grew up there and uh, I think Lake Milton has historically been known more for three plus ones or at most three plus twos and houses that would range from I don't know 50,000 to if you got a house for two hundred thousand dollars when I was a kid, you were highfalutin. Wow. Yeah. Okay. So that was a big deal. That is a big deal. Yeah. So I think the comparison that you're talking about between this and some other towns that where time has stood still is is apropos. The only difference is there was never that sort of cultural center to begin with. Okay. So there is. Let's talk about that. There's no downtown in Lake Mountain. There's there's no there's no downtown. There's no Main Street. There there's Mahoning Ave meets Grandview, and that's it. And what, what does that look like? It's the same uh, sort of barn style ice cream store that was there when I was growing up. T G Kips is a hamburger place that's still there. S and S Food Market, incidentally, looks a lot different than it did when I was a kid, but it's still in the same spot, you know. Um, so that is the downtown Mahoning, and you got a pharmacy. There is a grocery store and a pretty good one, actually. There's a Sparkle Market now across from across the street from when one used to stand. Uh, it's actually a better market than it was when I was a kid, but yeah, for the most part, you have like three or four sort of little market or pharmacy type industries and then the rest is just you know like um wet kids in (laughs) flip-flops coming straight up from the boat to get a very basic cheeseburger or chili dog or ice cream cone or whatever and then getting back on the boat and going back out on the lake okay so it is very outdoorsy the problem that i still see there is that it's still to this day there's just not a lot that makes you want to hang there when you're not on your boat. Isn't it surprising all those $2 million homes, some of them $2.5 million homes, and it is exactly what you say, what do you do when you're off the boat? Like I, I'm well, in shock that nothing has 
really progressed considering the influx of money that has come into that area. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. I, I would say it's still surprising to me that there's not a big restaurant. First off, the the character and the charm and the quiet and the peaceful attitude and all that other stuff is fantastic. But there are still no more amenities <laughs> for the people who are, you know, buying these expensive houses and coming in or what have you. Uh, I, all I can think when we were driving past them was they must bring a truckload of groceries and beer kegs and whatever in. They have when, to. When it, because other than the little, there are, there are some fantastic taverns around the lake. I will say that just from personal experience because I've been going there since I was 15 years old. But, um, and, and, and really good. But they good, don't equal the bouginess really, of these houses. No, and that's fine, but. Uh, like it doesn't have, I mean, the houses are a little ostentatious for where they built it, right? Like, let's, do you think so? Let's, yeah, I mean, come on. <laughs> like, in fairness to the Lake Mil Milton residents, some of those houses are like stupid, ridiculous. They got that property for a really good price, so they took advantage of it. They definitely did, but it just looks dumb. Right? Okay, weren't you surprised that we were there in the middle of summer and there were, in the middle of summer, no people riding their beach cruisers like we see when we go to these lake towns no people out walking like we were there on a weekend too like didn't that none of that surprise you it's a very country though so like in that regard it has one lane going each way there's no bike lane there's like where are they going to ride their beach cruisers are going to get hit you know <laughs> like there was one guy riding his bike and he was sort of you know blocking traffic for you know, like three or four cars backed up and they were I trying know, to get around I know, but my point him. is, is that you could, this could be so much more. There is. And in fairness, it, there, there is a, and believe it or not, there is a lot more to do there now than when I was growing up because in 1988, mm -hmm. the state, so uh, Lake Milton is a man-made lake. It's created by a dam. That dam used to be owned by Youngstown, and at some point it needed repairs, and Youngstown decided, well, we don't really have the money to do it, so we're going to try and pawn this off on the state. Well, they did that, but to do the dam repairs, they had to drain the lake. That kill like I had classmates who had friends. Like I had specifically a couple classmates whose parents owned the marina. So oh, when they drained the lake, no. that was it. Like game over for their business. And that was tough to watch. How there, you drain a lake. There's a you like, just, where does the water go? You let it all go through the dam. Oh, okay. And you stop it at the other dam. Oh, so it's just between two dams. Exactly. Okay. So. Thank um, you. No problem. How'd you know maybe. that? How did you I, know that? I don't know. Maybe it's because I grew up on a lake. Oh, my God. But okay. <laughs> what if it overflows? What if it overflows? What if you put what too would much, overflow? What if you put too much water between the two dams? No, it just, it just, it just, it won't, it doesn't overflow. You let a little bit out. Okay. But not enough to like flood the other dams, so the guys continue their work. They're okay. miles between the dams. Okay. So, so a little just, bit of water gets got out. Got it. Okay. So it's not like right down the street. Yeah. You know, some ducks float around, okay. or it freezes, but the guys can continue their work miles okay. away. All right. Anyway, uh, so in 1888, uh, 1888 it feels like it. <laughs> feels like I'm that old. In 1988, the state did agree to take over the lake, lake and it became a state park. So you would think, okay, best thing that could ever happen For to, sure. to this area. And in some regards, it was because there's a little pocket called Craig Beach right up by the dam. I shouldn't say little. That's where the vast majority of people in Lake Milton live. Like it's a, When I say it's a suburb in the middle of a lake town in the middle of nowhere, that's exactly what it is. It is. And so it's the only place you can go and have sand. Like they brought sand in. Like it's a beach. The beach is three times as big as it used to be. Yeah. There is a bike path there now. There's an outdoor auditorium there. Uh, they have, you know, like there are things to do. And we did see kids swimming on that beach that oh, morning. Yeah. It was a weekday in the middle of summer. So, well, you know. there was a weekend though, where we were driving around and I just was surprised that I didn't see beach cruisers and Range Rovers and all of that, considering the amount of money that's there. But okay. So go ahead. So Craig beach. Yes. They oh, built yeah. it well, up. You're not, I mean, you're going to see Range Rovers where the big obnoxious houses are, but that's about it. And those, those Range Rovers come in and they go out. Okay. And that's it. So that's kind of... We like, were... Like you, you, you're using Range Rovers and Lake Milton in the same sentence. That's like... It, coming from there, I just don't know what you're talking about. Okay. You know? <laughs> that is it's fair. Like, that like, is fair. It's not LA. Okay. It's not Chicago. There's still $2 million homes, but... I, there I, are four $2 million homes. No, there's a lot of them. There are not that many. 
two million dollars. I saw all the monstrosity houses. There, there, there are four or five. No, I saw across the lake all the big homes. There are four or five, and then there are some that are like a hundred. Uh, I'm sorry, one million, okay. and then they go down from there. Okay, but one million dollars in Lake Melton is like three or four. A million, million dollar home, but you it's know, every, it's like that's three a person. Or four that, else. That's a big shot who comes out. Brings his family, some friends, whatever. Goes out on the boat, screws off. They party at their own house. They have a good time. They go back to wherever they came from. They're not living there. So, I know that. I am well aware that they're not living there, but uh, go ahead. Anyway, my point being just that there's an influx of money and you don't see okay. a city or town. like. Uh, but, but when they're not there on weekends or for the week in the summer where they come, those Range Rovers, then what are the rest of the... How, the rest of the, how does a business that serves prime rib and an $80 bottle of wine survive okay. in Lake Milton. Oh, then we're talking about a business plan and business ideas. My thought is if they made it more desirable, wouldn't people come out more on the weekends? It would have to be a groundswell, a systemic decision to make that happen. And it for would. whatever reason, the, you know, the council members or the, the mayors, the people in charge, all that Do stuff. Do you think they, that like there's just a mindset in a town like Lake Milton, because we come across a lot of them. So Lake Milton is really no different than a lot of small towns we come across where they're just like, is apathetic the right word? We're like, eh, it's good enough. I think there's some of that. I definitely think there it's good enough going on. I think uh, it's, it's weird for me to go back when, uh, you know, having traveled as much as I have, uh, it's, it is weird for me to go back that sort of the vibe in my hometown a lot can be one of low expectations. Oh. And that's hard. Yeah. Because I was never that person. But even not specifically to me, I just think that's why. So when that's why I, you see no growth. Well, so actually there's attrition because when I was growing up, there were 3,500 people living there. Now there's only 1,500. So it's going back. It is going. It's, in a, it's receding. And the reason it's receding is because of. I think it's really difficult for people for for you to tell people like, hey, buy this sixteen dollar glass of wine when Lordstown shut down four or five years ago and they're working as a clerk at a grocery store now. When before they had a factory job making thirty to forty dollars an hour, getting their health care, taking care of their families. Now they're barely making ends meet. And they like I could care less about your bougie restaurant. So there's a lot of that going on. You know, in okay. fairness. So, wow. So they went from 3,500 residents to 1,500. That has to affect like the high school, it does. the sports programs, like everything. I graduated with 108 kids. And when we were there talking with my little cousins, mm -hmm. they told us that they basically, the high school is like 155 kids now. It used to be 400 kids. The entire high school. The entire high school is somewhere around 150, under 200 students. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Okay. And and they built that new school. They knocked down my old one, all that stuff. And it seems like a vast amount of space to have just that many kids, you know? And people not working. Yeah. Uh, there's a lot going it's on. Hurting. It's hurting. It's specifically like I know there have been moments where North Jackson, uh, the adjacent town, has said, oh, I think we're going to get Indian gaming or we're going to get this business or that business. And for whatever reason, like half of my school district growing up keeps getting passed over for these things. It's, it's been that way my entire life. Meanwhile, the neighboring town for the longest time is Lordstown. That's where the General Motors plant was. They had a swimming pool in their high school. They had all these things and all these teams and activities. Well, because General Motors could, brought a lot of money of to course, that area. Of course, but, but my school district saw none of that. So, um, now they're both seeing none of that. Now, now everybody both. in the area is seeing none of that. It does, I mean, it raises interesting questions on like what it's going to be the next five or 10 years if, you know, something I know, here's the thing though. In there. Don't you think it, this town, like a lot of towns we visit, could turn into a Waco where if a couple people came in, oh, or a Laurel, yeah. where like if, we're in, if a couple people came in, dumped some money in, made some businesses people would be working and you have an influx of wealth coming in from the lake that could make a difference but the question is why aren't they doing it like you you could buy acres and acres of land in lake milton for 
a very reasonable price. You absolutely could. You People want to aren't do it? doing it. You want to do it? No. <laughs> Okay, we'll get to that isn't later. That, isn't that, but I, I, my I, reason is the same as probably other people's, though. Well, it, it's really what is it? A, a lot of work. It's going to take a lot of work to bring in. Oh, you're you're like ground zero. You're 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 bottom rung right now, or maybe yeah. first rung. So you have you to do be, have that nice school that's already built. That is true. The lake is gorgeous. It's you, astoundingly beautiful. Don't you think you have to be a hedge fund person at this point? It can't be James and Denise. It can't be Joanna and Ki and Chip. It can't be Ben and uh, Aaron because it would be tough. You would need at least ten of your friends to come in as well. And here's the question: It goes back to let's just talk about Laurel, Mississippi, because we have firsthand experience with it. The town has to rally. Do you think absolutely the town in Lake Milton has the oomph to even rally? I think deep down there's a desire among the people. I can't speak to what the local politi political climate is just because I haven't been there for so long. All I can say is when I was a kid, everybody who was in charge was 157,000 years old. Mm -hmm. and They've all, obviously died and because it's a I know, but it's like now they're now. kids. It's like 30 years later and now they're, are their children running it? Like, I have no idea. I have no idea what the political landscape is. I have no idea what the... I see so much opportunity there, There James. is. I don't know if there are limitations because it's a state park. I don't know if... They, like now every time you want to put up a two by four, you have to get the state to approve it. I don't have those answers. All I know is... I agree with you. There's a ton of opportunity there, and it's going to take a ton of money to realize that opportunity. So if you wanted to buy a piece of property and have a house on lots of acreage for a very reasonable price, like other small towns we visited, oh, Lake Milton's is great for the picking. If you, I mean, if you're, a, if you're a fisherman or a boater and you just want some place to retire and have, oh, yes. you know, kind of a crappy couple months of winter every year, but then for the most part you can get out. It's windy, it's blustery, like that's sort of the weather there in the spring and in the fall, but you get your change of seasons, you get beautiful, beautiful scenery in the fall. And you have the gorgeous lake every single day of your life. If you're going to retire there, yeah, I mean, it's, it's an amazing place. If you just want sleepy, you're going to, like, you found it. You know what I mean? But it uh, could be someone's Friday night lights, though. It could be eventually. I mean, it was Friday night nights for me. Friday night nights. Friday night Friday night lights for me when I was growing up. Like, the whole community would come out on Friday nights to watch us play football. I guess, though, since half the community's dead or left. Gone. Yeah. It's. Oh, this is a town, seriously, anybody could take over. You get the right mayor, you get the right young people. This is like, this is a millennial's dream. It really is a millennial. You know what? That's a very good, that's a very good observation. It is a millennial's dream. If 30 millennials were to move in there. That's all it takes, And honestly. be able to remote work or they worked in healthcare or whatever and they made a good living, it's it could it could really be something in 10, 15 years. 100%. Because there's some cute houses. There's boarded up businesses, but the buildings are cute. Yeah. Um, you have money coming in. It's It has everything. It has the bones and it has the the, the structure. It has, yeah. it. how do you say it? Like when you build a house, it has all the wood. It's just everything else needs to be put in the house now. Like it has everything. Like it has everything. Just go like it, it's close to an airport an hour away yeah. you've got a supermarket there and you can even bring in a bigger supermarket um mm -hmm. it has it has beautiful countryside it has a beautiful lake i mean oh, like we went to yeah, Oklahoma. if you want to hear a symphony or go to the cavelli center in youngstown to hear yeah you a know, local university hey, i mean you're not going to hear like taylor swift at cavelli but you're gonna you know i don't know go see eddie money or somebody <laughs> You know, uh -huh. like whoever's coming around, like, no, I, I don't know, name it. a band. Cage the Elephant has probably played at the Cavelli Center, you know? Yeah. Uh, you could go to that section around Youngstown State University, go in, get your culture fix, come back out, you know, mm -hmm. go back to your beautiful house in Lake Mountain. One thing is it's the country. So yeah. you got to drive everywhere and there's That's no true. sidewalks. There are no sidewalks. No public transpo. Nope. We're talking country. So it's country and lake living. Like you want country yeah. and lake living. You've got it made. The other thing that's worth mentioning is, you know, when you have a depressed area like this, people out of jobs, poverty, certainly there's crime all over Youngstown, especially on the south side. Even Austin Town, some of the neighboring towns have gotten bad. Uh, but what, you know, what that also begs is a lot of opioid abuse, 
a lot of meth abuse. So it's picturesque in so many ways, but then there is that sort of underbelly. And I think there's well, yeah, you've enough got- of that going on with the 1,500 remaining residents where it probably does hold them back a little bit. It, it would take... Well, yeah, you have trailer parks. You have you still oh, see yeah. you still see cars on on cinder blocks. I oh, mean, yeah. so um, yeah, there there's some really rundown sections. Yes, and you know normally what you find is in the rundown section that you, there are there's there's drug use. So uh, yeah. you're right. When a small group of people even have that kind of problem, it does. I think. Oh, it's ma- it's exacerbated. It's magnified a thousand times. Agreed. Agreed. So, uh, but it's small. It's only fifteen hundred people. 30 millennials could take over. Yeah. I don't know. I have to put a lot of thought into like what it would take to get people on board. Number one, I, I, I tend to think the Gen Xers that I grew up with. Oh, they're tired. They're not going to do it. Forget the Gen Xers. Kind of. But at the same time, it would be nice. Like, I think they would agree like, oh, it'd be nice if I didn't have to drive all the way to XYZ to get, you know, groceries or go here or do that or whatever. Or Gen Xers are lazy, I feel. Like, we're not, but we are. Like, we're really busy with what we like. We are apathetic in a lot Agreed. of ways. Agreed. So you need millennials who are like, no, let's get this done right now. Yeah. You need some, you definitely need some people who are going to be annoying. Big thinkers. Big I don't th- think Gen Xers are big thinkers. Really? They're doers. No, oh, Gen Xers are just like worker Gen bees. Gen Xers brought us I think like- worker bees. I think we're worker bees. What? I kind of do. No. Okay, we have Steve Jobs. Okay, we have Bill yeah, Gates. Yeah, Gen Xers brought us like the tech industry. What are you talking about? They had to sit at a desk though. Nobody was like doing hard labor. We we invented Nikes, okay? Did you see the movie? They were at a desk designing. I mean, yeah, Matt Damon went out and found Those are like all Gen Xers. Michael Jordan, but like Those are all Gen Xers. Okay, I don't know. I the I The greatest just... shoe on planet Earth. Uh, okay, fine. All right, I guess we're doers. Metallica. Gen Xers. I hate Metallica. (laughs) Anyway. I hate Metallica because they are so anti-rock and roll, I think. They're not, they're not, not whatever. We're not going into that whole thing about why. People from Lake Milton are listening. (laughs) We want to keep our (laughs) listeners. Okay. Anyway, so um, you need a bunch, you need a 30 millennial. So find 30 millennials and let's go transform Lake Milton into like what it should be. Because I think, I think it could be, it could be what it should be. I don't think that about a lot of towns, but I do think Lake Milton could be what it should be. Hmm. Interesting. I'd be, yeah, I don't know. I'm eager to, I'm eager to think about this, like what exactly it would take because driving through there just, you know, a couple of weeks back, the main drag in, <laughs> the main drag in Lake Milton is only about a hundred yards and well, yeah, it's, it's the two, same four restaurants. I know that it's have been two intersections. Forever. You just said the hangout yeah. is two intersections, but that doesn't mean that can't change. No, no, I know. I'm saying, but it's like I have to think. Like, is that where you would start, or would you start? Oh where no, I'd start at Craig Beach. My friends had their marina. I would start at Craig Beach because you—that's where you start. Yeah, that's where people go. You start there and go out. So I would immediately put a wine bar across from Craig Beach because all the parents are exhausted from yelling at their kids all day to yeah. stop dunking each other, mm-hmm. stop throwing sand in each other's face. And at the end of the day, they're going to put Johnny in a booth. They're going to give them some chicken tenders and fries and they're going to order themselves a rosé. Yeah. That's what I would do. Or you have a food cart and you bring it over to the beach. Just start with a food cart. Let's I'll go small. Do the small. food truck park. Do a food truck. Just yeah. how about just two food trucks at Craig Beach? I'm gonna call my old friend Shelly, who used to own the marina. We're gonna get the band back together. Oh, I think you should. Wouldn't that be awesome? It'd be a great project. It would be. I mean, I look, don't even know if that place is for sale or what's going on. We went past it. I, I think didn't, about it. It's hard for me to. You can get a house. I don't know what was happening there. I don't know either. I guess let's call Shelly. But think about it. You can get a house around two hundred thousand dollars. Oh, and easy. The, and the sky's the limit. Literally, the sky's the limit. Yeah. <sighs> so. You've lived in L.A. for th- almost 30 years, yeah, right? 26 years. Yes, yeah, 27 years. 26 yeah. years. Sorry. 26 years you've lived in L.A. Um, I can tell you, it's really funny. We're driving through Lake Milton, driving through North Jackson, going to Youngstown. You were smiling. Was I? You were. Um, it well, was a good visit, yeah. It could you see visit. yourself back there? Oh, I don't know about that. Um, I have a lot of good memories all over the place just because I grew up in that environment. Do you miss? I mean, we keep I miss looking. the lake. I do miss the lake. It's hard not to miss the lake when you grew up on it. Yeah. 
Um, but all that land and living in a city now, you talk about like, oh, I want a house with a piece of property. Like, is it isn't it funny that we're kind of full circle? Are you full circle? I'm I'm, I'm putting this on. You. I'm definitely full circle. I mean, we've talked about this in previous episodes. How you know I'm I'm heading back into the sticks, and you're sort of dragging me to within an hour of an airport and within ten minutes of a grocery store. So. Uh, but I, th- I think that's good. I think I would get really bored if we had 50 acres out in the middle of nowhere. I don't know. I, eventually, I would get bored. So could you do Lake Mountain? Mm, not as it sits, no. But I will say I was probably smiling because, you know, a lot of the things that I felt shackled me when I was growing up. I did not have a great family life. I had the thing that made me smile was driving around uh seeing some of the some of the family members that did have a positive impact on me of course um seeing you know my old friend brad smith's house or we drove past my friend tammy's house good memories these are good memories people who were really instrumental in keeping me on a straighter path than i would have been and i was not a good kid don't like, I don't want to, like, I don't want any of my old friends coming and saying, dude, uh, I was, I got good grades. I was on the football team, but I got in my fair share of trouble and fights and all that stuff. So, um, so whatever was lacking in your family life, your, your, well, that's kind of, it's so weird because it's like removed now. And and I'm not saying that because both my parents are deceased. I'm saying that because I'm just older now, you know, and whatever, little tiny spikes of pain I felt at certain points driving through my old hometown are far superseded by the good memories now. Oh, that's amazing. It is amazing. It's a great to be in this spot because I wasn't in that spot. Oh, for you know, many Even years. as many 10, 12 years yeah, ago. Yeah, I've been with you for 25 years, so yeah. I know. It's... And you're like, let's go, let's go. And I'm like, no, no desire. Yeah. I, I didn't just never wanted to go back. Because it's painful. When you have painful memories, it's painful. Yeah, I mean, for sure. You know, we talk about this with our friends who have painful memories of their childhood and they don't want to go back to their hometown. And it could be the best hometown. But oh, yeah. when your childhood is marred with just, um, you know, trauma or divorce or yeah, I mean, you know, whatever I, it yeah, is. Yeah, it's no secret. Anybody who knows me knows it. Like when I was a kid, my parents went through a very torrential divorce and long story short did not they were two young people who shouldn't have never had kids and mm-hmm. they did and they handled it about as bad as you could have handled yeah. a divorce mm-hmm. long story short the whole community raised me so that's you know that's the great memory uh i you know i can't i can't drive past my friends houses without seeing their mothers or fathers faces you know and just realizing like there are a handful of teachers that told me I could be somebody and all that stuff. And, you know, in a little town, I mean, it's great to have that because normally it's just like, oh, you're going to go work in the steel mill or you're going to go do this or whatever. That could have been an easy out for every single teacher there. It wasn't. I mean, I had a classmate that went to Stanford. He's a genetic scientist. So and he had that sort of he had a good family life. But he also had, you know, that sort of infrastructure there. And just it's so important to kids to have that, you know. It is. And I do find it interesting talking about the apathy of a town. The one thing that I take away from visiting like Milton when, you know, everyone there has been very nice over the years. And if this particular visit, because we meet, you know, we're at the local restaurant and we're, you know, at the local grocery store. So everyone is very friendly. But the one feeling I overall have gotten from this particular small town and others like it. Lake Milton is not an exception. There's a sense of when you leave, it's not like a feeling of, oh, I'm so glad you got out. Uh, There's better for you out there. It's almost like you left us. There is a little bit of that, yeah. And it's so odd. I don't know why that is with some small towns. I mean, I never experienced that in my family. Um, yeah. My family, my cousin has left Chicago. He's never experienced that. His whole family yeah. is super supportive. Um, you could get that attitude in a big town or a small town. I just find in our travels, more people are apt to feel like you must think you're better since you left us. And I don't understand that attitude. Like I think to myself, we all know Lake Milton isn't thriving. It's in numbers has gone down. Nobody's moving to Lake Milton. So if somebody gets out 
and does well for themselves or just gets out and creates a lifestyle that is uh, just a little more active, a little bit more progressive. Let's applaud it. Like, I don't like I always just find it odd. I mean, it's like, you know, it'd be nice if someone's like, you know what? There's better things for you out there rather than, oh, so you think you're better than us and you left. Yeah. I mean, I feel fortunate that the high school friends that I'm still in touch with are all like super supportive in that regard. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, I would say the community at large, I agree with you. There's a little bit of like, Oh, hotshot, huh? Living out there on the West coast. I hear, I would never live in LA or I would never live in Florida. I would never like, why you, I can't believe you went there, you know, or, and it's like, bro, you haven't been like within outside of 60 miles of this place your entire life. I do find it funny when people say, you know, yeah, there are definitely a lot of people like that. That, so. But that is common in a lot. Like Lake Milton is not an exception it's to not the rule. An like, anomaly, like right. yeah, like y- the 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 people that live there. That attitude. We've found that attitude in other small towns where people are like, huh? So, yeah, they left. They think they're better than us. It's yeah, weird. Mean, it's like instead of applauding progression, they're not. Yeah, I think uh, it's. I mean, in a lot of ways, it's sort of probably an immature mechanism that allows them to feel better about themselves. Like, you know, like whatever did or did not happen in their lives that whatever expectations yeah. they had that were that be, were unfulfilled, they look for any opportunity to sort of kneecap you. Well, you yeah, know? because sure. I used to think, you know, small town mentality is small town mentality because of lack of information, lack of worldly experience, lack of, oh, just how about like just going outside their 20 miles of town. But with technology being at your fingertips yeah. and knowledge is everywhere, you can't use that as an excuse anymore. No, like, you really so when can't. I, so when I, when, I, when I meet bad behavior or I see people saying ignorant things, I think to myself, that's deliberate. That's no longer a sign of um, information not being available to them. No question. I don't disagree. I, I would say the best small towns in America are the ones who celebrate the people who go out in the world and become successful. And from that from that town agreed and welcome them with open arms that's progress the thing about lake milton is it's it's welcoming to other people like people from elsewhere you know if you go in somebody will say hi and talk to you in a little podunk restaurant or whatever or at a bar at a tavern everybody will talk to you if you're you're from somewhere else they're friendly if you're from there and you left and you came back you might get a comment you know what i mean or something like there's a little bit of that you know or there's a lot okay well you're not hurting my feelings right now cuz i'm 40 plus years old you know what there's a lot of there's a lot of cuz you know we've met several people during the course of visiting there there's a lot of well you left us there is i mean it's, and that's not just your family. That is not just your no family. There's no question. Like, that you is can across count, the board. You can count on one hand the number of relatives that visited me in Los Angeles in the 26 years I was I there. I know. But again, this is not just... And it's because I'm the one who left. Yes. Well, you left us. Yeah. And it, again, know? it's not just your family. No, it's it is, not. That is, that is the feel across the board when you meet somebody whose maybe brother had left or son had left or daughter had left. They don't go and visit. And, and, and it is that... Again, yeah. it is that, men- well, you left us, that mentality of, well, you left us. It's there, interesting. It's it is interesting. interesting. It's, and again, it's, it's a dysfunctional family, really. It's like the people you grew up around sometimes are just, you know, it, it's like they love you, but they want to punch you in the gut, you know? <laughs> yeah. It's, and it's, there's a little bit of that going on under the surface. And it's not only relegated to Lake Milton. We have seen Correct. that. I've seen that in Appleton, Wisconsin. My friend Lisa left. Her uh-huh. parents came to visit, I think, three times. And it's that whole mentality of, like, you left. Oh, yeah. That's, I mean, that's across the board of small towns. It is. It's it like is. if you leave, it's like you're kind of like saying, I think people feel like they're being slighted when when you leave their town. Like, oh. To a degree. Right? Like, I'm I go- think I, I think a lot of people like the life simple. So they're like, yeah, I'll go visit or I'll go on vacation once a year to Myrtle Beach. And then I'll go back. Okay, so I have a question. Like, we know so many people... It, from the we know so many people from the Midwest that go on vacation to the same exact place every single year. <laughs> I know. It's crazy. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, it's I agree. and that's you know that's yeah. that's the mindset. So they're All like, right. I got away. I went to Myrtle Beach. Well, you've been there thirty times. Like you know, how many times do you need to walk into the same seashell shop? You know. Agreed. But so they really, like it really quick. Yeah. If Lake Milton exploded, how would the locals react? 
I think there'd be some older people who hate it. And I think if it were to explode to a point where you get an extra thousand people there who are all moving in a new direction, it wouldn't matter because the momentum would already be there. I think a lot of people don't want change and that's why they like living there. So, you know, in fairness to them. Uh, And I don't think that's just naturally a part of the older set. I think there are younger people who like it there and they're like, it's quiet. I don't want it to change. I like going fishing. I like coming in and I get all that. Like, I understand all that. If it, if I will say in defense of my people, (laughs) if the lake were to look like if it became like all those $2 million homes, those obnoxious houses on the one side of the lake, like, I'm sorry, they're just like a million dollars too big for me. Okay. So a million dollar house, great, beautiful. $2 million house, like, bro, what are you doing? Like, seriously, <laughs> like in Lake Milton, are you kidding me? And It's great to dream and great to have a great house and all that other stuff. But it's like, why don't you take that $2 million and go to Aspen, Colorado or something like that? Because I couldn't you know? afford it in Aspen. I know, exactly. So it's like, why build it here and lord it over every? It just seems super obnoxious. It, it's like it's like an it's- inability to read the room. And everybody's struggling around there. And then you got Joey Buttafuoco or whoever <laughs> building his house on the north side of the lake. It's like, I get it. I understand why people don't want that sort of growth. Okay. I understand that. However... There are plenty of small, there could be, like it could feel a little more like Opelika or uh, even New Mexico, even Santa Fe, with obviously a lake flavor. Um, It could feel like more of that sort of small town, and it doesn't currently. So I think there's a happy medium somewhere in between. I do find it funny that there are a lot of people who don't want change there, and yet you have these huge monolith houses and it's like somebody greenlit that oh for sure you know what i mean like they threw enough money at it and they got what they wanted so i don't know it's weird but you are seeing i i I mean i've seen just looking at zillow over the last couple weeks uh, i've seen some houses you know that are like five or six hundred thousand dollars and up around the around the lake and that's not something you would ever envision when i was a kid you know what i mean so so you've mentioned it before. Yeah. Um, always looking at Zillow for your grandma's house that was around that was near the lake. Yeah. What's it going for right now? I think it's like two sixty or something like that. Listed. It's not for sale. And when so. she passed away, it was going for fifty thousand, right? Some I think under eighty for sure, if oh. I remember right. I it was like Maybe it's a hundred. No, it would definitely was not. Because yeah, I, I remember know. the number was. I'd have so to ask low. my aunt. Yeah, it was low. It was like fifty. Well, my so my grandma Gordon's house, the one, and that's kind of the sad part of going home. But there are houses of either family members or old friends or what have you, they're just rotting away right now. And so my one grandma's house on the one side of my family, like her house, somebody bought that years ago for I think 60 or $70,000 with an acre of land and all the Amish furniture inside the garage. And it's just sitting there. It's like nothing's happening. It's just rotting. So, But somebody's living there. I don't think so. Oh, okay. It did not seem like that. Huh. I thought I saw curtains in the windows when we went by, but you could be I bet right. they're my grandmother's curtains. Oof. Yeah. Okay. I'm yeah. sorry. The house looks like it has not been touched. Okay. Yeah. Since. Sorry about that. That eh, stinks. You know, that's part of growing growing older and going home and all that that nobody wants to acknowledge. But, you know, if you're from Chicago. Your old neighborhood's gone. Oh, so. yeah. My mom's bar has been leveled. <laughs> yeah. Totally. It's like a parking lot. Now. I look at it on Google Satellite. And I'm like, oh, that's where I that's where I used to go and, like, have my little Shirley Temples when my mom, you know, was it behind the bar? Oh, wait, hold on. We've got to talk about your old girlfriend's house. Oh, shoot. That. Oh, um, oh let's do it. It's let's... not in the top five. But oh, it was that's a, nice it, of you. It was a funny... You know, I'm very secure in my own skin. Oh, no, so I'm I fine know. with it. If, it. if her house is in that top no, five, I'm so I mean, okay with it. Okay, that. so quick recap. We were driving around where I used to live at Youngstown State University. My old house is gone. It's you mean a field your now. Frat house. My old frat house, yes. Um, I was going to leave the fraternity out of this, but since you brought it up, yes, I was a frat, former frat boy. Um, Once that, a frat boy, always a frat boy. We can't leave it out. That house is gone. I'm just rolling over your comment. 
I used to live right around the corner from my college girlfriend. So Denise and I had the GoPro out. We were like shooting my old fraternity house and we turned the corner and I'm like, oh, and there's my, you know, my college girlfriend's house. And, and all of a sudden you see heads on the front porch. And I was like, oh my gosh. And yeah. Denise is just like rolling the camera as we uh, go by. Uh -huh. I'm holding so. the GoPro out the window. I almost yeah. waved at them. Oh I almost God. waved. You should have. They looked right at us. They did. They, they were I, like, what, why are they filming us? There was two yeah. girls and a guy. I'm like, oh, I'm sure one of them is probably her kids. It I, happened so fast. I didn't recognize any of them, but they were way younger than me. So. And here's what is crazy. And this is just kind of par for the course with James and I like if it could happen it will it was pouring rain yeah there was a tornado, tornado warning warning everybody we didn't even talk about that yeah everybody was ducking and covering while we're recording except for his girlfriend and her family they were the well, only i don't know ones. if she was there in fairness she doesn't live there anymore okay well yeah. her family was yeah. out on the front porch we're talking house upon house upon house every every porch was empty because there's a tornado warning yeah and her porch, her family's porch. having a smoke. Someone's yeah. having a smoke. Three people out there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now that you mention it, my cousin texted me after we landed and said, hey, by the way, you're going to have some weather and all that. And we were driving from Pittsburgh to Youngstown. And sure enough, it started raining and got bad and all that. And all of a sudden, we were driving through downtown Youngstown and it started pouring rain. And There's an a alert like yeah. blasted everyone's phone. You know those Amber Alerts? That was the alert on everyone's phone. And the air phone. raid siren went off oh. in downtown Youngstown. The air raid siren right. went off. I didn't know what it was. And the air raid siren, siren. Siren. Thank you. The air raid siren went off. And I had no idea what it is. I looked at him and he's yeah. like, oh, there's a tornado warning. Yeah. Growing up in Ohio, I lived under a tornado warning my entire childhood. Nobody takes so serious if you're from the Midwest. It's like, It whatever. just says you might see a tornado. The conditions are right. Right? Exactly. Yeah. Well, the conditions were definitely right that day. Someone saw a funnel because people were ducking and covering. <laughs> yeah. Like the phones were all blowing. Like all the iPhones in the city were like, beep, beep, beep. No, seriously, there's a there's a tornado. We just kept driving. Yeah, and we recording. did. recording. Literally, we, we kept did. driving and recording. Yeah. And we're going to wrap this up. So if yeah. you've got an idea, go to Lake Milton. It, it can happen. Yeah. If you uh, if you have the means and the ingenuity, it's there. It I is. mean, if you are, if you are the next uh, Ben and Aaron and want to flip a city, Lake Milton may be your gem. So anyway, I'm happy you came with me to my hometown. And uh, yeah, to be continued. More visits to Ohio on the way. Empty nest, full tank. See you guys next week. Check the mic and make sure it sound right, boys.